Hello, family. Welcome to another Lord's Day. This is the day the Lord has made, so we will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm glad to see you all coming in today. And as you're coming in, I want you to be glad about it, too. If you're glad to be in the service, I want you to make sure that you share some love as you're coming in. And also, I want you to share this live. I know that many times we take for granted that God has a word for us. But how many of you know that there's a word connected to you? And you want to make sure everybody that you're connected to receives the word of God. You never know what God's word can do for somebody else. So I want you to click this uh, share button right now. Click the share button right now and watch how everybody that you're connected to can be impacted by the same word that you received today. Amen. I want you to make sure also that as you're coming in, I want you to share with us where you're watching from. Even if it's on the replay, I want to welcome all of you here. But I want to make sure that everybody is present and accounted for. And if you're ready, for what God is going to do, I want you to just say, I'm ready. I'm I'm ready for what God is going to do on today. Amen. If you would, let's prepare our hearts for prayer. We recognize that days gone by have become uh, very dark and dismal. Uh, and we want to make sure that we continue to seek the help of the Lord God. In times like this, we need God like we never needed him before. So let's pray even now. Lord, how we give you glory, honor, and praise. For all that you have already done in my life, for all that you continue to do, God, for all that you have been. Lord, you've been a help in ages past, but God, we need you in this present age. God, we need you right now because we recognize we're living in a time of wars and rumors of wars. We pray, God, that now, that by your power, by your might, God, that you would cover those who are in harm's way. God, I pray for everybody that is being impacted by what is going on, both overseas and in our own homes. I pray, God, that right now that you would give peace, God, where there is storm. God, I pray, God, that you would give grace where grace abounds even now. God, I pray, God, that you would continue, God, to not only bless those who are overseas in harm's way, God, but I pray, God, for families that are in harm's way. I pray, God, that while the enemy is running rampant among the land, I pray, God, that you would take control, take authority, God, and move by your power, move by your spirit even now. We thank you, Lord, because we know you're able to do anything but fail. So, God, I pray that you have your way even in times like these. We lift up our eyes to the hills from which cometh our help, knowing all of our help comes from you, God. So, God, I pray now that in a special way, God, that you would provide a hedge of protection around each and every one of us, so God. Keep us safe from hurt, harm, and danger, God. Let no weapon that's formed against us prosper even now. We pray for those who are sick among us, God. I pray for healing and strength in the name of Jesus. I pray for those who have lost loved ones, God. I pray uh, for the Atkins family, God, and for those who got, who have, for the Hazel family and the loss of Mary Frances, God. I pray, God, that you continue to comfort them, comfort us even now in our time. Grief, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you continue to comfort all of those who are going through bereavement. Help us to be, help us to know, God, that you are the lifter of their heads even right now. I pray, God, that for those who are watching and have strayed away from you, God, or don't have a relationship with you, I pray that by your word today, God, that you would draw us nearer to you and we give you glory in advance for what you alone are going to do. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Again, make sure you click the share button right now. As God is going to do something absolutely awesome on your behalf. I'm beginning a series uh, entitled Running on Empty. Running on Empty. Anybody that can testify that though you have been continuously busy and continuously going, doing all that you do, the truth of the matter is, Pastor, I am running on empty. This is not uncommon because most of the time you don't even recognize you don't have nothing left, but because life doesn't stop, you have to keep going. What do you do when life doesn't stop? I'm here to encourage you that this month we're going to help you to see that God is going to send some help your way. Tell your neighbor, help is on the way, and you're going to get full service right here. God is going to give you what you need to keep on going, even in the midst of running on empty. Amen. And so I want to call your attention to the book of Exodus today, Exodus, and I'm going to read chapter 3, I'm going to read verses 20 through 21, though I'll reference the entire chapter, all right? 
Exodus chapter 3, I'm going to read verse 20 uh, through 21. Say amen once you have it. Amen. It says these words. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. 21 says, and I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. Amen. May the Lord have the blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. I want to preach from the subject, give me 20 on the three. Give me 20 on three. Brothers and sisters, uh, what we have seen in the last couple of days, in the last week or so, is that due to the trouble that is going on between Ukraine and Russia, it has caused a trickle effect on everybody else. With the rage, with the waging of war, on Ukraine and the threat and the danger that is associated with it, with, with Putin serving a mandate that anybody that even tries to help is going to receive a grave uh, consequence towards that. It has caused everybody to be uptight and in an uproar, but it has also had a trickle effect on how it affects everything underneath that. Because of what's going on over there, it has subsequently caused things to go up over here. Many people, even this week, have began complaining about the rising cost of gas. Gas has become at an all-time high and in some places becoming so astronomical that people are even considering, watch this, whether or not I'll be able to move forward from here. There's some people who have been guilty of never even having to fill up their cars. And so they have been accustomed to just going to gas stations and just simply saying, give me 20, I'm from three. The problem is now with things going up and the trickle effect of war, it has caused you not to get as much for what you had as you used to. And I know you think I'm talking about simply physically paying gas prices, but I'm talking specifically to you emotionally because gas, G-A-S, we're also seeing, watch this, a growth in the amount of stress. And so the growth in the amount of stress you have been going through is going higher. You have, because of what you are going through on this side, it has become a trickle effect, watch this, and, and the growth of the amount of stress that you're going through has trickled down, not just to you, watch this, but to your spouse. It has trickled down to your family. Your children now are feeling the impact of the fact, here it is, that you have become guilty of running on empty. It, it is indicative of the fact that you have been trying to survive, trying to make it, trying to keep things afloat. But now with with stress rising and going higher and higher every day, you're wondering, what am I going to do? How am I going to make it? But might I suggest to you that the only people who are guilty of running on empty are people who are going somewhere. Can I suggest to you that good news for you is in the fact that at least you're going somewhere. People that are complacent in their placement aren't worried about gas rising. Why? Because they're not going anywhere. But those who understand that this is not where God wants me to be, this is not all that God has for me. I ought to have five witnesses. I'll make six that can testify that I'm I'm not I'm not comfortable where I am because I'm believing that God is calling me for more. I'm believing that God is calling me for greater. And as you try to achieve greater, there's going to be some wars raging against you, which is going to cause the price of your gas, the growing amount of stress to go up in your life. But I've got good news, and that is found as you pull up 
to pump three. Can I help you with this? This is the third month of the year, but I'm not talking about the month of March because we are going to continue to march forward. But the pump I'm talking about is Exodus chapter three. As we pull up to pump three, there are some people who don't need a lot. They don't need a lot. So here it is. You can simply put seven on pump three and that will work for you. Can I tell you this? Some people are going to be blessed with the fact that as we engage uh, and pull up to the pump and we examine uh, pump three, here it is. When you put seven on it, chapter three, verse seven gives us what we need. Some people only need this word. Here it is. And that word is this that the Lord hears you. Here, here's all you may need. This is for you, is the fact that the Lord hears you. Can I tell you what Exodus 3 and 7 says? Exodus 3 and 7 says, the reason you can celebrate the fact that I'm not going to be here long and I won't have to run on empty is because the Lord said, I have surely seen the afflictions of my people which are in Egypt. Uh, I have seen the, the affliction. I've seen what they have gone through. Is there anybody that can praise God that the Lord sees you? He sees what you have been going through. He sees your daily struggles in Egypt. He sees how people have treated you, even when you treated them well. He's seen you, how you have behaved when people have behaved badly on your behalf. He sees how people have mistreated you, no matter how they you, you have treated them. He says, but not only have I seen their afflictions, but I have heard their cry. And see, there's a difference in seeing and hearing. Because there are some people who have seen your afflictions, but they don't hear you. Who am I talking to today? That there's some people who've seen what you've gone through, seen how you've handled things, seen how you've had to deal with some things, but have yet to hear the affliction, have yet to hear your cry because of what you have on you. And the Lord says, if you can't celebrate nothing else, you ought to celebrate the fact that you can pull up to pump three and celebrate, watch this, that I hear you. You ought to praise God that even now God hears you. He hears your midnight cry. He hears your tears. He hears your cry. I, I wish I could say like David said, he says, I love the Lord. Why? Because he heard my cry and pitied every groan. Somebody ought to praise God that you've got a father that hears your cry. Yeah, because understand that seeing your tears but not hearing your cry helps doesn't help me understand what you are in need of. But any parent would tell you that I understand what my child needs based on the level or the intensity of the cry. The Lord says, I hear your cry by reason of your taskmasters. I, I, masters, I, have, I know your sorrows based on what you have, the cry you have released. And there's somebody who's watching right now. You have released a sound unto the Lord, your father. He says, I hear your cry. I understand the difference between a cry if you're hungry or a cry if you are alone, a cry because you're spoiled. But then there's another cry that comes from the depths of your belly, the depths of your soul, because you are sick and tired of being sick and tired. You are in a place where people are oppressing you and suppressing you. He, he says, I hear your cry. Somebody ought to shout, he hears me. He hears me. Isn't it good to know that the Lord who is over the heavens and the earth still hears me? I, I know he's got a lot of people to tend to, but here's my shout. He hears me. Somebody ought to shout and, take, and put that in the chat even right now that the Lord hears me. He he hears me. Maybe, maybe it is you might need more than seven on three. Maybe you you might need a, 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 a little bit more than that. Uh, but so so here it is. There's some people as you pull up to pump three, you you may need uh, you may need twelve on three. Yeah, maybe maybe you need twelve on three because here it is. Not only does the Lord hear you, but here's your shout. But He's here with me. That's what verse 12 says. Verse 12 says, and he said, certainly I will be with thee 
and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Now understand that the people are in a valley experience. The people are in a low place at the moment. But, but God says, listen to this. I want you to be assured that no matter where you find yourself, I'm going to be with you. Can you praise God that he is with me? Uh, I, I can hear the old folks say that he walks with me, talks with me, and tells me I am his own. He says, I am with you. That That's comforting for somebody who feels like you're going through things all by yourself, who feels like you're on this journey all by yourself, who feels like giving up, like nobody knows the trouble you see. God says, I am with you. And this is going to be talking that the mountain that we're talking on is going to be the same mountain you'll praise me on. You, you, you got to hear this. He says, I need you to understand that I am with you. And there ought to be confident knowing that the I am is with you as Moses is preparing to go before Pharaoh to tell Pharaoh what God it says. He says, God, how will I know? How will they know that 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 you sent me? He says, you got to tell them that the I am that I am is with you, has sent you. You got to know that the I am is with you. How many can praise God that no matter what you need, God says, I am that I am. I am the bridge over troubled waters. I am the water in in dry places. I am a bridge over troubled waters. I am a shelter in the time of storm. I am a doctor in the sick room. I am a lawyer in the, I am is with you. Praise God that he is, somebody shout here, he is here with me. He is a very present help in the time of storm. He is a, a, a hearing and a prayer, hearing and answering God. He is here with me. How do you know he is here with me? Because he's been here all the time. God is everywhere at the same time. He is so wise. He knows everything. He's so broad that you can't get around him. He's so tall that you can't get over him. But he is here with me. Somebody to praise God that when people have left you, when mother and father have forsaken you, the Lord is with you. Friends have become few, but the Lord he is with you. Somebody ought to shout, he is here. He is here. Not only uh, is God, what's this, a God who hears you. Not only is he here with you. Here it is. There's some people who say, Pastor, I'm sorry. I'm going to need a little bit more than that. I'm, I'm going to need a little bit more than that. Uh, and, and so you're going to need 20 on three. You're going to need 20 on three. I know that you've been waiting this whole time, uh, but 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 here it is. This is what's going to help you get to where you need to go. I know you've been running on empty, and you just need a little bit to help you get to where you need to go. Here's here's your shout. Here it is. Is that not only does the Lord hear you, not only is He here with you, but somebody shout because God is about to help you. Yeah, you you got to shout why? Because I just put twenty on three and twenty. Verse 20 says, and I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. Now you miss this because you forgot the story. When it is, God says uh, that I, I'm sending you there to make sure that I'm going to have Pharaoh to let my people go. He says, don't worry about them because I'm going to stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders. Now, now, he didn't say with all my power. He, he didn't say with all my anger. He says, I'm going to smite them with all my wonders, which I'm going to do in the midst thereof. Uh, and after that, he will let you go. Uh, if, if you do know the story, if, if you do know the story, uh, you, you understand that the wonders that God performed for, for the children of Israel was that when it was, Pharaoh did decide to let him go. He let him go conditionally and started chasing them again. And so when he chased them, he chased them, watch this, to a place where they were stuck between the Red Sea, here it is, and the mountains. They, they thought, surely we got them now. Surely 
And we, we, we got them cornered. Now, surely they don't have nowhere to go. And the Lord opened the sea. The Lord opened the sea and caused the children of Israel to walk across on dry ground. Now, here it is. When the sea opened, I'm sure it brought a smile to the children. Yeah. And uh, as they're walking on dry ground, can't you see them smiling? Because right when it seemed as though there was no way out, seemed as if they were they were at a dead end, seemed as if there was no help in sight, God made a way out of no way. Now, this would have been okay if Pharaoh had to just let them go. The problem is he chose to chase them and pursue them even after God had worked wonders. And so what made the children smile is what made God smite. Y'all going to catch this in a minute. Because it's only after Pharaoh chose to chase the children in the midst of the wonders that God smacked them with the same wonder that made Israel smile. Do I have any witnesses that knows that there is going to be a praise in between the wonders of God? that made you smile and is going to make God smite the enemy. You ought to praise God that the only thing, the worst thing the enemy could have did was try to chase you after God worked miracles. And the, the worst thing the enemy could have did was try to pursue you after God had already worked a, a wonder in your life. You ought to praise God that if I just hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battles, the victory shall be mine. He says, if you need if you need to praise God for anything, you ought to praise him that you got 20 on three. And that is that the Lord is going to work wonders that's going to make you smile and is going to make the enemy get smited. Yeah, get smacked. Yeah, you, you got to praise God for that. But then listen to what 21 says. He says, I will give this people favor in the sight of the same people who tried to suppress them. I'm going to give you favor in the sight of the same people who said you didn't deserve it? I'm going to give you favor in the sight of the same people who tried to keep it from you. And it shall come to pass. I hope you're ready for this. That when ye go. See, this is your problem. You, you've been trying you've been trying to say, well, Lord, they, they're not going to let me get no further than this. They're not going to let me go past where I am. No, 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 no. The Bible says, and when ye go. Tell your neighbor, because I'm coming out of this. I'm, I'm not going to be in this place long. I'm not going to be in this situation for long. But when you go, the Bible says, here's your shout. Y'all ready for this? You pulled up to the station. I hope you're going full service. Ye shall not go empty. Can you say that with me? You shall not go empty. Oh, I know you've been running on empty. You've been running. You've been at the end of your rope. I know you've been operating at a place where you don't have anything left. But when you go from where God has delivered you from, tell your neighbor, he's not going to let you go empty. God is about to give you what you need. Praise God that when you go, you won't go empty. Hallelujah to God. He, he says, I'm not going to let you go empty, but I'm going to give you the spoils of the land. I'm going to give you houses that you didn't build. I'm going to give you land that you didn't plow. I'm going to make sure that the riches that are laid up for the just are, are, are going to be given unto you. The wealth of the wicked is going to be given at your disposal. Praise God that you won't be empty anymore. Praise God that God is able to give you just what you need to keep moving forward. And today, if, as you're watching today, if you don't have a relationship with this God, I want you to know that today can be your day. You can give him your life right now by simply saying this prayer. Just say, Lord Jesus, I need you in my life. I confess that I'm a sinner that needs to be saved by your grace. I, I believe that you died on the cross, rose on the third day with all power in your hands. Come into my heart. My life will never be the same. In Jesus' name, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you pray this prayer, we're believing by faith. You're now part of God's family of faith. Listen, it's time to give. All week we have been prepped in the presence of God in spite of what we've been going through. And God has blessed you with the word you've needed for such a time as this. I want you to sow where you're growing. If you are 
watching right now on the replay or in live, in, live and in living color, I want you to make sure you take this time to give so into this ministry. You can give using Cash App, which is dollar sign, the tabernacle, the letter U, the letter C. Dollar sign, the tabernacle, the letter U, and the letter C. Remember, you can't be God given no matter how you try. Listen, all leaders, all leaders, which means you, I'm calling all leaders to make sure you tune in every Monday for our Monday Night Manor. Every Monday, 6 o'clock, we have Monday Night Manor with you in mind as a leader. God is developing the leader inside of you. I don't want you to miss it. So make sure you tune in this Monday for our special Monday Night Manor as we discuss developing the leader inside of you. Remember to share this right now. Somebody needs a fill up today. Somebody who has been uh, parked long enough needs to know God is about to set you free and whom the sun set free is free indeed. And when you go, you will go empty. Share this right now. Remember, my name is Pastor Richard Holman. I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer.